This program has been made possible in part by the following sponsors. The Trial Lawyers Association of B.C. The Vancouver Courier Newspaper. My new book about addictions, All the Way Home, Building Recovery That Works. Because I know what eagle-eyed observers you all are, I just have a sense that you can tell that we are standing today, and the reason for that is that our guest has a new mantra. She likes to say that sitting is the new smoking. Catherine Ford, who is obsessed with the core and the spine, is an old friend. She was, in fact, she made the mistake of being my swimming coach. <laughs> glob, glob. Uh, she is a, a, a swimming competitor and swimming coach, also is an accomplished performer and actress, but for many years now, she's been running a wonderful place downtown called Fitness Table Vancouver. It's great to see you again, Catherine. Great I deliberately you. had us... <laughs> Yeah, are we doing okay yes, so far? Yes, we're doing very well, very yeah, well. Yeah, well, for you, I mean, I'm pulling back. Just for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> just for you, because, you know, my naturally schleppy behavior just won't <sighs> cut it with you, I know. No. Even, even in the pool, you kept yeah. saying to me, Lengthen stretch, out. lengthen yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, fitness table, how, can, how is it possible for people to get healthier and stronger lying on a table. I know, I'm saying that rhetorically because I've done it with you and I yes. love it. Tell yeah. me, tell everybody. Well, the fitness table program yes. is a postural training program where yes, we do work on tables to yes. help strengthen people's spines, but yes. we don't just lie on them. We work in all different planes. So we do sit on them, we lie on our backs, we lie on our tummies, we lie on our sides. Yeah. And the way that you can use the table is to help to activate muscles along your spine and into your core that you otherwise wouldn't be able to. Yes. Um, so that word, that word core, yeah. was was not used a lot 10 or 15 years ago, no. but we now hear it, I first heard it from you, we now hear it on NFL broadcasts, yeah. we hear it everywhere in sport, yeah. what's it about, it's not just this tummy, what is it, what is the core? No, it's, it, yeah. it's, it's. Yeah. The, it's the abdomen, but it's yes. also the base, which is the pelvic floor and uh -huh. the diaphragm. And w there is a lot of misconception around strengthening your abs, which yes. is functional strength, where you're just strengthening the more superficial muscles. Yes. But then there's also actual stability that you have to acquire by activating and strengthening the deeper layer of musculature, which includes your pelvic floor. Yes. It includes your transverse abdominis, which is like a big corset around your waist, yes. and then also your diaphragm, in conjunction with your spinal muscles. I suddenly thought of this woman that I ran a, a, a public speaking workshop for her company yeah. some years ago, and she was the CEO and she was brilliant. Mm -hmm. I think she won many awards as being you know, a, a, a female leader in the business community and so awesome. on. She was great. In the first day and a half when she was giving speeches, I, I, I can't ask the camera suddenly to show my feet, but she was standing with her feet crossed, you see, oh, like yeah. this, yeah. and sort of, you know, mm, blah, blah, blah. Mm, and mm, she was mm. quite unbalanced. By the closing day in her last speech, she was standing with her feet in line with her shoulders, with her hands comfortably in front of her, absolutely emanating power. Yeah. Right? Yes, well that's the thing is that the way that you're holding yourself in space is a direct reflection of how you feel internally and how you interact with your world. So yes. a lot of a lot of the research that's coming out now is saying that your posture is going to affect not only your physical health but also your mental health. Completely. That they're interrelated. Yeah. And so when we're working with people, obviously our primary focus is on strengthening the muscle fibers, increasing mobility, increasing flexibility, but the the impact of the work is that people feel better internally and mentally 
Your breathing is better, your circulation is better, your posture is better. I, I've done it, I've been in your classes and I've seen other people, I know how I felt, I always felt like I had a great workout and mm -hmm. it seems, how could you have a workout lying on a table? But you do push people. Yes. I mean, you're not a mean person, yes. far from it, you're a very sweet person, but, yeah. but you push all of us, all of your clients and students to really stretch and really just try a, a bit more and just go for it. And you come out of there and you're schwitzing. I mean, you're, you're, schwitzing. <laughs> you're really sweaty. You're, well, you really have a workout. Yeah, and I think that the objective with the work that we do is to yeah. help people understand how they're moving and where they're moving from. And so what we're, what we're doing is we're actually helping them to activate muscles that they're not used to recruiting. So although some of, the, some of the way that we work is quite static and we slowly build up into more dynamic movement, it's really to help people activate and also build a relationship with muscles that they don't know exist. So for someone walking by the studio yes. and looking in the studio, they think, What's yeah. the big deal? Like, you guys aren't working out at all. But because I'm asking people to fire muscles that they have to look inside themselves for, it actually is quite challenging because usually those muscles are very weak. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk for a minute about people's picture of themselves in space. Oh, it, it fascinates yeah, me. Yeah, it is yeah. very interesting. Yeah, tell me. The other day, for example, okay, I had a 31-year-old gentleman come to the studio for his evaluation, which yes. is part of the beginning That's process. That's how you begin. Table, yeah, yeah. Yes. Spent an hour in an yes, evaluation. an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he said, I've got chronic upper back pain and shoulder uh, pain. Yeah. I'm going to the gym. I'm working out all the time. And I watched him as he was speaking to yes. me. And I'm not kidding. He was sitting like this, right? Oh, God, This really? gentleman happens to work at a computer for 10 to 12 hours a yes. day, five yeah. days a week, right? Yeah. Oh. So when I actually placed my hands on him and changed his alignment in space, he could not, first of all, believe how hard it was to just remain vertical, yes? Yeah. Yeah. And also, he, didn't, he couldn't believe how uncomfortable it was in terms of this is such a massive change that I had no idea that I had to go from point A to point B at such yes. a distance. Wow. So that's, yeah, it's an indication as to how disconnected people are with their bodies as well as where they, their, their perception is of where they should be in so space. So not enough of us, as we go about, especially in an urban lifestyle, are even thinking or aware of how we are in space. No. We're just trying to get from A to B. Yes. And we confound it by texting oh. as we're going. Yeah, exactly. That so, must be very helpful. Well, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's yeah. not. Yeah. But so what happens is that people don't realize that they're in a dysfunctional movement pattern until they get pain. So, which is a red flag, right? Yes, and usually course. the pain makes them understand that they're doing something incorrect with their movement patterns, so yeah. then they have to correct them. But the process of learning about how to change that is a very demanding process to go through. We're going to talk about computers and sitting at computers in a moment and yeah. desks and so on, but talk to me about elite athletes. It seems to me mm -hmm. that even some wonderfully great elite athletes are not hip to any of this. Am I right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, well, well I, without naming yes. celebrity names, I mean, but tell yeah. me, I mean, we probably have some world-class tennis players who, who really are just standing funny, sitting funny. Uh -huh. you know? I have actually another gentleman who yes. just started the program who's yes. a CFL player. Ooh. And he just, yes. yeah. he leaves and he's, he says, I'm humbled by this because yeah. his superficial strength is so apparent, right? He's yes. very strong superficially, yeah. but he He's not connected through his abdominals and through his core. So those stabilizers that I was talking about yes. earlier, they're not active. So although now, what do you mean he's not connected? I mean, this is, he's, a, he's a CFL player, so he's doing reps. Yeah, and he's doing all this strong, jazz, and he's doing this, this stuff with the feet and uh -huh. pushing, pushing those uh -huh. tons of things. He's yeah. doing all that, but somehow, what? It's because his brain is yeah. not attuned to activating his breath and yes. activating his core when he's in effort. So in order to learn how to do that, he has to have someone like me guiding him through that process so he starts to understand that he can move his shoulders and his arms, he can move his legs and yes. his pelvis, but he has to connect those 
parts of his body through yes. his abdominals. He's got, he's got to get it all happening at once. Yeah, in elite yeah. athletes, usually they're they're not balanced because their bodies are built for their sport. Yes. So and to perform well in their sports, so whatever muscles they need to activate to facilitate that performance if are had, going to be really strong. If this is an unfair question, but if you had to pick a, a category of elite athlete. Who would you say most naturally tends to have that balance? Is it swimmers? Because you're a swimmer. But who, who tends? Uh, I, I think of ballet dancers. Ballet dancers yeah. must be amazing. I mean, we work. That's where the yes. method came from, right? My, my teacher in Calgary was yes. a prima ballerina. Tessa yes. Dream Petit was a ballerina yes. as well. And so they actually saw that inside the dancing world, there still was this missing link which is why Therese developed the method in the first place, because yes. it is truly, David, a missing link throughout all of I remember sport. years ago being in Los Angeles and just for fun going to Rodeo Drive, deliberately going to the Prada store. Oh, yeah. Because I have no interest in the Prada products, although I got interest when I saw them, because the architect was famous, and I mm. wanted to see what he'd done with it because the store was famous. Yeah. And it was startling. It was fabulous. It was great. And... The products actually were amazing. I mean, I found myself staring, believe it or not, at high heels oh because God. because they were they, they were, were a work of art. art. They were work of art. <laughs> but the lady that attended to me, who was very fun and sweet, she was standing like this. You see, and and, mm -hmm. and she said, "May I help you?" And I said, "Don't tell me, ballet." <laughs> and she said. How do you know? And I, I said, position one. <laughs> she was standing in position yeah, one, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, and I think ballet dancers are the best at reproducing what good posture is. Yes, that yeah, yeah. nice long that vertical line. Yes, yes. But they're also very, very good at imitating movement. So what they'll do is it's almost like they're contortionists. They'll see or be asked to create a frame, physical frame, and they'll be able to execute it. But internally, if their system isn't working to, yes. to connect, yeah. then they're putting themselves into these positions that aren't supported. We've seen this year in the NFL, I'm an NFL fan, mm. a, a, a few truly extraordinary catches, one-handed catches, you know, five, six, eight feet in the air, in yeah. the end zone, with four guys clutching at you. Oh We've seen several of those. Those folks who do that, those guys who make those leaps yeah. and do those things, they must have some sort of firing system yes. that's, that's integrated. Yeah, because if they extended their arm... Alone. Alone, then yeah. they wouldn't have the stability to really take the take the ball into their hand and catch it, their body would move. Uh, last year, I remember during a World Series game, I watched a shortstop miss a grounder, and I jumped up in my living room and said, you can't catch that with your arm, you have to go with your whole <laughs> yes, body, yes, right? Exactly, yeah, exactly. And I've done it, I've yeah. done it with a tennis racket. Reach with my arm, and I go, you idiot. Yeah. Where's the rest of you? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. okay, we're gonna <laughs> take a little break <laughs> and, uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about the, the, the uh, toxic business of sitting at a computer all day and other, uh, other sedentary positions. Um, your chance to send a note here to davidberner.com and also that opportunity for those folks who support us here to say hello on the standing version of Shaw Community Television, Cable 4, back in a minute. We'll have to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> This program has been made possible in part by the following sponsors. The Trial Lawyers Association of BC. The Vancouver Courier Newspaper. My new book about addictions, All the Way Home, Building Recovery That Works. All the 
those familiar excuses, you know, Christmas, New Year's, and so on, they just won't cut it anymore. Sure, it's fun to have uh, an extra piece of pie and, and another drink or so, but, you know, you still have to stay healthy. You still have to stay in shape. Many of us, of course, naturally overdo it. That's just what the season screams for. But then our bodies scream in agony. Hey, how come I can't walk? How come I can't get out of bed this morning? And if anyone knows the answers, it's Catherine Ford, my old swimming coach. And uh, how you survived that, I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, a, a, a dancer, an actress, and uh, a, a swimming, a competitive swimmer and swimming coach. But for many years now, what is it? What, what year are we in? Five? Six. Six yeah. year. Six Whoa. And a half. It seems yeah. like Wednesday you started I know. this. Yeah. I know. Fitness Table Vancouver. Spend a moment about your mentors. Uh, how do you, you learn this from a woman in Calgary and she learned it from someone else? Yeah. yeah. Therese Kadreen Petit is the founder of the Fitness Table Method and she's yes. in Montreal. Yes. And she discovered the fitness table, that yeah. table that we use, yes. in France, actually. Oh. It was first developed by a kinesiologist whose yes. name was Ferdinand Pachinat in the yes. 1920s. And so from Ponchonat's method, Therese discovered the table, fell in love with the principles behind the work, got the rights to bring the table back to North America, and built the method, working in collaboration with Mindy Levin, who's the head of physio for rehabilitative movement at McGill. So M Mindy and Therese basically took Ponchonat's method and they toned it down to make it accessible to the general public. One of the things that I love, and you sort of hinted at it, two of the things that I love about what you do, Catherine, is you hinted at you're talking about the, uh, the evaluation hour yeah. that you spend with people. You do really uh, take a look at each person individually. Yeah. Yeah. And when you work, I've been in a room when you're working with six people, you clearly see each person individually. We're all working on approximately the same thing, but every body is different, yeah. right? And you in particular, now I can't speak for your, your uh, people that you have working mm -hmm. for you and with you now because I haven't met them because I, when I worked with you, it was when you were just starting, it was a couple of years ago. Yeah. But you do have the eye. You have an incredible eye Thank you. for seeing, and I think you have the hands yeah. uh, for, uh, for, for sensing exactly what's going on with each person's body. Yeah, well, every person, as you said, is different. Yes. So when people come in, they start with their evaluation. So I know what different injuries they have and where yep. their personal imbalances are. Yeah. So then we can be Mine's specific. Well <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We can be specific in the work, in the classes. Yes. So we can really address that person's individual issues. And yes, each person in the class is doing the same exercise. But the way that we teach our hands-on approach to the, to the work, yes. it really addresses each person's personal needs. And you're not expecting everybody to do that exercise seven exactly the same way. No, well, we're looking for the integration of the parameters, Yes. but everybody has different restrictions. So yeah. it's based on on their, their capacity as yes. well as what our objectives are, which is of course, to realign the spine, to activate the core, and to connect your well, whole body. I want to talk about computers, but, I, but something just occurred to me. Did you ever have, I haven't seen this, but have you ever had anyone start sobbing in the middle of class? Uh, not recently, yeah. <laughs> thankfully, but yeah. yeah, I mean, what we're doing I'm not is talking about pain. I'm yeah. talking about the release of some emotional energy that's been bottled up, withheld, held back. Yeah, well, what we're doing is we're changing people's center. Like, you're changing yes. their nervous system, right? Because we're looking at breathing and we're changing their movement patterns. So, in doing so, you're changing people's... Uh, sense of who they are and they're also releasing a lot of stuff that's not necessary and sometimes Absolutely. there are emotional releases that go along with that but yes. it's always it's always back to the work in terms of we're strengthening the spine, we're strengthening the abs, and we're reorganizing the system. And, and everybody is walking around carrying a lot of baggage, a lot of emotional, psychological baggage, a lot of, a lot of the stress of the day, stress of historical things that have happened with them. Yeah, right? and I also think that people don't fully appreciate how much one's physical body holds their emotional and psychological 
traumas. Yeah, I've believed for so. a long time that you and I should be working together, actually. <laughs> that yeah. we, we should be doing a workshop where, yeah. where you're doing this and I'm doing my, my therapy thing. Awesome. And it would be awesome. It would be killer. So let's, <laughs> talk, <laughs> let's talk about the computer table. So my, my problem, I've been thinking about standing at my computer for a long time now. Of course, I just invested another 200 bucks in a beautiful leather office chair, yes. you know, and I have this wonderful table that I'm very fond of because it's a kind of antique and it's a big refractory table. Yeah. You know, it's like a big eating table. Yeah, it's great. And I got a million things on it, but I know where they all are, right? But having said all that, if I had any brains, I'd chuck the whole thing. I think, and I'd have a thing standing like this. Well, the thing about posture is that you atta attain good posture by moving and by re-educating your muscles yes. and your bones yes. in terms of where the muscles should be holding the bones in space. So yes. for sure, to go from sitting for a prolonged position, for a prolonged period yeah. to standing, if you're yes. doing a lot of computer work, it's very good to do that because it gives some variation. Is that gonna change people's poor posture? No. 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 Because if they're sitting like this, yeah. I guarantee you they're standing like this. They're going oh, to the gym oh. and they're training like this. Oh, they're sleeping no. like this. Really? They're eating like this. Oh, for no. sure, because they don't know how else to stand. And wow. they're not strong enough to change their they physicality. The they don't yes. have the strength to carry them. Yeah, so they have to, for sure, to, to, get, to spend a gazillion dollars on the new chair, the new stand-up desk, it's a good solution. Excuse me. It's yes. a good solution to the 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 stagnant sort of position that you're sitting in for eight to ten to twelve hours a day, but it doesn't address specifically the postural issue. You know, I actually cannot sit, and I think this is a good thing for me. I cannot sit in that beautiful leather chair at home for longer than about 20 minutes yeah. and I have to get up and walk yeah, around and go to. get a glass yeah. of water or something yeah. and then I come back and I find myself, Catherine, often shifting around in yeah. the chair. Yeah, because uh, your body's craving movement. Yeah, it's yeah. not happy there. It's not good for circulation. It's yes. not good for digestion. It's not good for brain function. It's not good yes. for your skeletal system and your muscular yes. system. Sitting for prolonged periods is a very bad thing now, for your you, body. Now, you... Uh, that's why I don't go to church. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> <laughs> Segway. <laughs> no, no, no. no, no. Your business is raving. I mean, you're getting lots of customers, yeah. lots of clients, and so on, which is awesome. great. But at the end of this month, you're sponsoring a freebie, a big yes. open house. We're doing an information session. Yeah, tell us what so is it is. So it's for people who have seen the website, they yes. like what they see, and they're interested to experience a class at the fitness table. So yeah. it's, an, uh, it's a trial class, essentially, tagged with a bit of an information session. So yeah. we're explaining more about what the work is. Should we then, tell people yeah. right, right now, should we tell yeah. them that we do all this naked? No. 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 <laughs> no. Oh, no, 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 no. We oh. do not do all of this oh, naked. Oh, we don't. Oh, sorry, no. No, no. But you should wear... You should wear workout clothes yeah, and schleppy yeah, clothes. Yeah. And you don't need shoes. And, and you need to RSVP. Yes, you know, if yeah, it, go yeah. to the website, fitnesstablevancouver.com, yes. and email us yes. so you can reserve a spot because it is limited in terms of the. And it'll be, it'll be busy. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's right, yeah. right at Richards and Smythe. But yeah. the address is, is there. Yes, on the website. And so on. Well, do you have mad, madcap plans to, to have a second? Branch plant. A second studio yeah. right now. Yeah. What I'd like to do is I'd like to focus on sustaining the integrity of the work while we expand into the location that we have and perhaps yes. open up a little a bit more space bit more room, yeah. in the central location. Yeah. Um, my fear about opening a second space is that the the quality of the work decreases. No, you can't let that happen. No. You've got to, you've got to have terrific people. Yeah. Because uh, uh, you're the person with the eyes and with the touch, and uh, and we have to teach that to our to our teachers, yeah. which has been successful. And and, and how teachers. how do you do that, Catherine? And how do you get the sense? I mean, many people. Can, I've met lots of people who do all kinds of physical work, yeah. and some of them have the gift, and others do the work without a lot of result. Yeah. They just don't have it, yeah. and they're only thinking about you know, the paycheck or something. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, what, part of the training process yes. that's quite in-depth with anatomy and physiology, yes. it's also about teaching how to touch and what we're looking for and how yeah. to become attuned to our clients yes. so we feel and see 
what that individual needs, that individual's body needs, yep. and then we, I basically have to teach my teachers how to feel and what they're looking for. I bet you must have a secret code of, I mean this seriously, of language that you teach your instructors, that there are certain things you don't, certain words you don't use, oh, for sure. certain things you don't say to people, yeah. but other things that you do. Yeah. There's a way of touching people, there's a way of saying something to someone without being negative. Absolutely. While encouraging them, I want to encourage you to do something new, I'm not telling you you're a dope for what you're already doing. No, and the objective is always to be clear about what our, what our program is, which is yes. to develop health and function. So with that kind of through line yes. in our teaching, yeah. it helps to be clear when we're working with clients that we're creating a nurturing, supportive environment yeah, that's non-competitive. Yeah. It's a very important aspect of the work that we do. And you have some people who get madly attached to what you do. Oh, they're addicted. Yeah, yeah but it's yeah, a great addiction it. to have. It's, it's yeah, they do. Addiction. They love it. They love it because they yeah. feel the benefit, right? They yeah. see the benefit. And they 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 experience the change that the fitness table has in their whole life, right? It's not just about working out; it's about changing your life. It's great. Thank you, yeah. Catherine. It's Thank always great to me. see you. It's you're, fabulous you're, to see you. Too, you look David. wonderful as always. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so that's it, folks. Uh, thank you. I hope you're standing up straight. Um, next week, I have no idea. It's a surprise. We'll let you know in time. Uh, but thank you for being here with us this evening on Shaw Community Television Cable 4. Good night.